Lamas here at the program. Getting ready for a big fight against Max Holloway here at UFC 199, uh, June 4th. The Forum, Inglewood. Um, it's actually going to be a great weekend of fights as far as the folks at home. Uh, with UFC Fight Pass, there's uh, um, fights on Friday night, and then obviously the big fight on, on the 4th next night and Saturday. And they're close. The one on Friday night is down in um, uh, down in Costa Mesa. So it's right down the street from the Forum. So it's like everything's kind of really, really in that southern part of California right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. How's it been getting ready for this fight? Because Max poses a lot of different problems that a lot of guys in the weight class can't really don't know how to put together yet, know how to deal with. Yeah, you know, Max is a quality opponent. Um, you know, but I, I feel like I, I possess the, the proper tools necessary to, to come out with a win in this fight. And uh, training has been going great. I'm about to enter into my last week of, of training. Uh, uh, and then next Saturday, I'll drive back to Chicago and then head out to L.A. on Tuesday. So when you say last week of training, what is that last week of training going to consist of? Is it still hard sparring going on in that last week? I wouldn't say hard sparring, but there's still sparring. But, you know, my my training partners have in mind that I have a fight in two weeks. So they're being we're, we're being very cautious, very careful. And it's more more like just kind of going over all the game plan stuff during sparring and trying to implement it into my sparring, having my my partners really emulate my opponent's style and and just work game plan. So you look at your records, uh, you're 16 and four. He's 15 and three. So really close as far as amount of fights. <laughs> But he's on an eight-fight win streak, and he hasn't lost since 2013, and that last loss was to Conor McGregor. So we're talking about a long time, um, a young kid with a lot of confidence coming into this fight. Um, just because, you know, anybody gets on a fight-beat win streak, you know, all of a sudden you're like, you're untouchable. And all of a sudden you, hit, you start hitting a six, seven, eight, you're like, I can't do any wrong kind of mentality when, when, you're, uh, when you haven't been in the game um, and been pushed that hard. How do you think that that is going to equate into the fight, his confidence jumping into the fight? Well, I, I'm sure his confidence is going to be sky high. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm planning for. But if we're being honest, I don't think he's fought anybody like me with my wrestling caliber and with my overall caliber. You know, I'm very good at mixing everything up. And uh, I think I'm going to be, you know, pretty hard for him to handle. You know, you're 6-2 uh, and two in your last eight fights. And then you're like, I think you're uh, for 7-2. and two. You know, out of out of your last nine fights, so it's not like uh, you're you're too shabby yourself. I don't want you to. I don't want anybody at home to think, oh, well, Ricardo's not up to the challenge, whatever. Um, but you battled uh, Chad Mendez. You battled uh, uh, Jose Aldo. Those are your two the two losses you've had in recent history, and you seem to always rise up to the challenge. You, you never. It's never a, a situation of of um, I'm just going to show up and get a paycheck. Which, which happens to a lot of fighters, that they show up, I just need to get a paycheck this week, I'm just going to show up. You always rise up to the challenge. <clears throat> Do you actually have to rise up to the challenge for, for Holloway, or is this, is this a challenge that is, is a lateral move? It's not so much a step up in competition, like, like a lot of the betting people think it is. I feel that once you're up to this caliber and these type of fights, you rise up to every fight. You know, everybody poses a different challenge in, in every fight, and you have to rise up and – and conquer those challenges each and every time. So this is no different. I know Max is is an awesome fighter. He's, he's a good guy too, you know, but this is business. Uh, so we're going to go in there and hate each other for 15 minutes, and when it's all, when it's all over, I'll buy him a beer afterwards or something. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited for this fight. I think it's going to be a great fight for the fans. This is actually brings me to my next, my next portion of the questions, but you jumped for me, so I'll get to it now. This fight is one of those fights that's getting slurred at the carpet. Like, no one's really paying attention to this fight. Even though if you are a real fan and you understand how the both of you fight and have fought other people, the matchup is amazing. Like This, is, this could be fight of the night, literally on this card. Because um, it, just the way stylistically, like you said, your wrestling background, uh, Max's striking background, how he likes to get out of the way, how he likes to get in his face. Like it's a complete bipolar opposite of, of each other, of how this fight's going to go. And really, neither one of you talk trash. So as a result, it's not getting any hype. Because you're not going out there, I hate my guy. You just said yourself, we're going to hate each other for 15 minutes. That's it. The only time we're not going to like each other is when the cage door is closed. And once the fight's over, I'll buy him a beer. Like, who cares if we moved on? And he's the same way. So there's no hype on this fight at all. Um, do you feel like sometimes because, and we've talked about this in the past, and it's getting even more apparent now that a lot of these fighters are getting main event, co-main event status 
and really have, have like a, a, a two and a two and four record. And you're like, well, how are they getting this position? Because they're just out talking everybody else. Um, is there is there been? Do you feel like that too? That you feel like this fight is not getting the hype that should get behind it? I think that a lot of the true fans really are excited for this fight. I've I've had a lot of reaction on my social media to it. And I mean, hey man, these Hawaiians love to scrap and Latinos like me love to fight too. So, you know, this is this is going to be a fight for everybody. So, uh, you know, we don't we don't have to talk trash because the fight itself is going to sell. Right. Right. And I actually like that better than than the, all the trash talking even though I was, you know, one of the biggest trash talkers, but in hindsight <laughs> it's like just go out there and fight and be done with it. Let, let, let the fight be the action. Let the fight be the hype. And let the fans and your social media, let them hype it up. You don't, you don't need to do it yourself because it just is what it is. Yeah. Um, did you have to change anything at all during this training camp to get ready for, to get ready for Max? Was there anything that you had to, like, implement or, or pull out from your last training camp because of the style that Max brings? Um, not really, man. I, I really don't bring different people in. I don't fly guys in to, to imitate my, my opponents or anything like that. Um, my camps were, were pretty much the same. I started in Illinois. I came down and finishing in Miami, same training partners. Uh, you know, I just really have a lot of faith in my coaches and, and they kind of, they, they'll sit there and watch the tape. They'll watch his fights and then they'll train me accordingly in our mid sessions and in sparring. Also, they'll be telling me, you know, he does this and this, so watch out for that and, and try and do this. So, um, I really let my, my corners, uh, kind of play the game, you know. I'm like a video game out there. What they, what they, what they say, I listen. I, I uh, acknowledge it, and then I do it. So uh, I have a lot of faith in my team, and I think uh, we're gonna, you know, bring it home. How, how long is that drive going from Miami back up to Chicago? Uh, nonstop. It should be around 20, 22 hours. So are you gonna stop on the way up, or are you just gonna keep you know, drive straight through? We're gonna drive. So one of my brothers is actually gonna fly down on Friday night to help me drive back uh, Saturday. I'm going to train Saturday morning, and then we're going to hit the road. So um, if it all goes well, we, we drive all the way straight through. I won't miss a day of training because I'll get there Sunday and, and still be able to work out Sunday, and I'll be on track still. Why don't you just fly down from Chicago to Miami? It's not like it's uh, – Because I had that guy that I had to bring with me. I had this one that I had to bring with me. So I don't think they would have let me on the airplane with them. So I decided to drive down and – um, also it saves me about, you know, a thousand bucks in running a car down here for the month. Yeah, 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 for sure. It puts wear and tear on your car, but it's really not that bad. If you don't mind driving, it's really not that far. Yeah. I mean, really. So, Rico, thanks for coming on here on a Saturday, man. Uh, or excuse me, on a Sunday. I appreciate it. Um, good luck next week in your training camp. And I can't wait to see this fight. Unfortunately, I don't think I can get in, uh, for this one, but I'll, uh, I'll definitely be at home watch this one. It's going to be a great fight. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for having me on. Take care, brother. You too. too.